Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's going to be reviewing the Grand Highlander Hybrid. Before we begin this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Large Miller Toyota here in Murray, Utah, for giving me some time with this Grand Highlander. I'm going to include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Powering this is a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder paired to an ECVT and a hybrid system. Fuel economy is 36 around town and then 32 on the highway with power outputs being about 245 horsepower. Now before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, you guys can see it's got this flat boxy design which makes the Grand Highlander look more grand. Pretty cool headlight design down below, and I like the chrome trim that kind of goes across there. And then you guys can see the Toyota logo front and center. Fog lights off to the side, and then notice we do have parking sensors here at the bottom. And putting it all together, I do like the front end design here of the Grand Highlander. Now around the side here, our tire wheel setup is 255, 55, 20 in the front and over on the rear. And you guys can see with the wheels, you got the silver, and then notice there are fender flares right here, and you can see the rest of the bodywork there. We also have some splash guards, and then we've got chrome trim here on the bottom of the window. And then here is the full side view with the Grand Highlander. Now taking a look at the key fob, you guys can see we've got our lock and unlock function. We also have the opening for the hatch and the Toyota logo there as well. And popping into the rear, you guys can see Grand Highlander down below. We've got a decent amount of storage space behind the third row here. We also have a little outlet there in the back as well. And you can throw the third row down if you want even more storage. When you're all done, just press this button up here and then lower the hatch right back down. Pretty cool looking taillights here at the Grand Highlander. Then you guys can see Grand Highlander there. And then look at the rest of the badges. Of course, we have our HEV badge just like on the Prius. And putting it all together, let me guys think about the looks here with this particular Grand Highlander. Now, taking a look at the rest of the door panel, you guys can see soft touch here at the top and down below. We also have a sunshade here for the rear passengers. And I like the stitching that goes across. I think that's pretty nifty. And you got more storage down below. And then here are the seats. You guys can see perforated all down the center portion. I do like this trim here. And they do have this latch that will let you access the third row. Now, I've been in the third row of many a Grand Highlander. And I also was just in the third row of a Lexus TX. Um, so, it can fit adults back there, but I would reserve it for uh, kids in terms of space. Legroom here in the back is good. We also have a little storage pocket. We've got our own climate zone here in the back. We also have heated seats, which is nice. Some USBs, a little outlet down below, and then headroom. It's good. Now, taking a look at the front door panel, you guys can see soft touch here at the top, and then also down below. We've got all of our window controls here. With our mirror adjustments, the mirrors do power fold in. We also have memory seats, and then I like this trim that goes across. Blind spot monitoring with the mirrors too. Then you guys can see with the seats perforated up front, just like the back. And then you got all of your power adjustments on the side. Heat steering wheel button here. Let's turn on the outlet for the hatch. And then you got more of the nice trim and soft touch here at the top. Now taking a look at the steering wheel, you guys can see soft touch all around. We also have our controls here for the adaptive cruise control, lane departure. You've got our controls for center stack, volume and voice command controls as well. And then your stocks there on the back. Now I've got this digital gauge cluster here in the center, which we can use to scroll through different bits of info here on the car there in the center. You can also kind of change the layout of the gauge cluster, as you can see, which I don't know, I think that's pretty fun to do. And then we do have some different drive modes, like a sport mode, and also it'll show the Grand Highlander coming through. Got an eco, a normal, and then even a trail mode as well. And then there's also an EV mode that it's in right now. Now in reverse, we do have a 360 camera system with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel and resolution with it's solid. So nice that it has this camera system, by the way, because it's a big SUV. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, response time is pretty quick. We do have all of the different menus we can scroll through. And then down below the infotainment system, or actually next to it, you got the volume control, but down below, We've got dual zone climate controls, heated and ventilated seats, physical buttons, which I really appreciate. And then there's a bunch of soft touch trim. And then you'll notice that there's some storage above the glove box, a little USB. And then below the glove box, got some more storage. And then you got another USB here and there. Lots of USBs. That's for the camera system. Wireless phone charging pad. Shifter here for the ECVT. Some cup holders, got your parking brake with your auto hold, stability control, drive mode select here, EV mode with the hill descent control, and then you guys can see the center console. Good storage there. Kind of interesting how that opens up. Um, and then up top we do have a panoramic center. 
So here's what I want to stick for this Grand Highlander. You guys can see all the standard equipment. We do have some options on this particular one. Total MSRP, 55917 I like Toyota's always very specific with the pricing. Let's see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood. Both the mirrors, should do a blind spot Throw the rest of the rear. And, oh, well, it's gonna be a little bit of a short drive, but we'll at least get somewhat of a test in here with this hybrid. The one that I really wanna drive is the uh, Max version, right? That has the Turbo 2.4 with the hybrid system. But, I mean, this is still important, right? This is powertrain that many of you are probably looking into. And so, let's kinda see how the acceleration's like. Not as bad as I thought it would be, honestly. I thought it was gonna be kind of slow given the power figures that I read and the size of uh, SUV that this is, but it's actually not slow. Get one more acceleration here. And not the best acceleration, but you know, gotta make do with what we have. Not bad though, not bad um, in terms of how that accelerates. Now some other stuff with this Grand Highlander, and I, I do want to talk about this in this uh, review, so I guess we'll just do a little loop here while I talk about this. I just reviewed the Lexus TX, and it kind of, it helps me understand the two vehicles quite a bit more. So what I noticed, the Lexus definitely had a nicer interior in terms of the aesthetic and in terms of the material use, but the value proposition one isn't as strong. So this has a panoramic sunroof. The Lexus did not have any sunroof. This has uh, cooled seats. The Lexus did not have cooled seats. This has a 360 camera system. The Lexus did not. This is 55 grand. The Lexus was like 59 grand for the TX. So you do pay a bit of a price premium for the Lexus over this Grand Highlander. So that was really cool for me to be able to, you know, see that uh, in person. Um, but with that being said, with this hybrid powertrain, um, this is gonna be the powertrain that's gonna be more about efficiency. The, the Hybrid Max is more about performance uh, more than anything else. That's why it's got the crazy power figures. It's like mid 300s for the horsepower, it's like 400 pound feet of torque. So your fuel economy is not gonna be as good, but your power and performance is gonna be a lot better. So it depends on what you care about more and what you value more. If you just want all out economy, this is gonna be the most economical grand Highlander. Uh, and if you like if you currently own a Toyota Highlander hybrid and you like how that drives This is a little bit heavier. So it does feel a little bit slower than the Highlander, but it drives very similar to the hi current um, Highlander hybrid So let me know you guys think about the Grand Highlander in general and especially compared to the Lexus TX and let me know you guys think about this hybrid uh, Grand Highlander and would you go for this or would you go for the max version or would you just go for a standard? Uh, Highlander hybrid